Charles is not up there. <clears throat> Our scripture reading from today, today is Psalm 32, 8, and this is the King James Version, although you can use any version you like. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Well, I wrote um, this sermon in the year 2020 towards the end of the year. And so I know I had originally had one sermon I wanted to do for this Sunday. And then I just, even though it was one of those sermons that I absolutely love, this was another that I remembered loving to preach when I preached it back in 2020. But Kevin can tell you I have wrestled with this choice ever since I gave the title to you too because it is a hard-hitting sermon. It pulls no punches. Um, but I do know that when we all get to heaven and we have to stand before God, the choices that we make, each and every tiny choice that we make, we have to answer for. And so had I chosen not to do this sermon after I gave them the title, I would have had an answer for it. So it is a hard-hitting sermon, and I'm just the whole time asked God, are you sure? Oh, and then he just was very quiet. So <laughs> just know that I tried to get out of it. Um, <laughs> I <don't try. laughs> um, I began that Sunday with this excerpt from a report that was written by Lee David on February 9th. Um, in that year, writing back about the helicopter crash that Kobe Bryant and his daughter had died in. Um, and this is what he had written in the report. The 41-year-old Los Angeles Lakers icon, Kobe Bryant, and I think his daughter, maybe it was Gianna, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, Bryant, that was 13 at the time, and seven others died on a cloudy January 6, 2020 morning near the Southern California coast when their helicopter slammed into a hillside in Calabasas. Again, I hope I pronounced that correctly. It stunned the sports and basketball world, as you all recall. Zobayan was the chief pilot for the Island Express helicopters and had 8,500 hours of flight experience and had 10 years of experience of flying in that area where the craft Crash. The National Transportation Safety Board said during a hearing <coughs> outlining the likely cause of the crash. The pilot, they decided, most likely had an episode of spatial disorientation. And some of you, if you have any sort of background in aviation, knows what spatial disorientation is. If you don't, don't worry, I'll help explain that. Um, they said in this report, we have seen this type of accident before, unfortunately. Board member Michael Graham said, helicopters continue to use VFR, which is what you see in the title of today's sermon, VFR, which is visual flight rules, flight into meteorological conditions, and unfortunately, they lose control of the aircraft due to spatial disorientation. And this is what spatial disorientation means. Uh, spatial disorientation of an aviator is the inability to determine the angle, the altitude, or the speed of the craft that they're flying. It is most critical at night or in poor weather when there is no visible horizon since vision is the dominant sense for orientation. You use your eyes, we all do every day, you know, if we're up, if we're down, if we're sideways, if we're backwards, we use our eyes to let us know where we are in our area, our space. The auditory system, the vestibular system, which is in your inner ear, you all know if you ever have vertigo, when that goes, you can walk right into a wall. You really quickly learn that you think you know what's up is up. <clears throat> Once the inner ear is messed up, your body has no clue. It can just run you right into a wall. And the proprioceptive system, and that's the sensory receptors that are in your skin and in your muscles and in your tendons and your joints. You don't realize that all that comes together to let you know if you're up, down, backwards, where you are in space. It all works collectively together to coordinate the movement with balance and can also create illusions of non-visual sensations which result in spatial disorientation 
in the absence of strong visual cues. In other words, if you cannot see the horizon, if you cannot see the land, if you can't see where the clouds are, your body tries to figure it out. And it may fool your inner ear, it may fool your skin and your muscles into trying to figure out what's up is up and what's down. And it can completely throw a pilot off of knowing to go up or to go down because they can't tell where they are in space and time. Notice that when a pilot cannot rely on visual cues, he could have continued in adverse conditions had he or she been able to rely on instrumentation. In particular, if you've ever seen a gyroscope or played with one, they're absolutely fascinating, maybe to a science nerd like me, um, but you can't fool one. Uh, they don't go by visual cues, and they maintain, apart from the structure of the plane surface or electronics, a very clear and distinct image of the true Earth horizon and the pilot's position in relation to that. So no matter what the plane is doing, the gyroscope always lets them know this is where the horizon is. And if your plane is over this way or over this way, you know by looking at that it's not connected to the plane or to anything other than letting you know where the horizon is. You can trust it when you can't see the land. So a pilot with instrumentation can trust that instrumentation when he cannot trust his own eyes. And he can still steer clear of disaster and danger if he uses his instruments. But unfortunately, we all know that aircraft crashes result in death due to spatial disorientation. When instrumentation is not present, or when it's there and it's simply not used. Here's another famous example many of you are going to remember. On March 5, 1963, American country music performers Patsy Cline, Cowboy Copas, and Hawk Shaw Hawkins were killed in an airplane crash near Camden, Tennessee, along with a pilot, Randy Hughes. The accident occurred as the three artists were returning home to Nashville after they had performed in Kansas City, Kansas. Shortly after takeoff from a refueling stop, Pilot Hughes lost control of the small Piper PA-24 Comanche while flying in low visibility conditions and subsequently crashed into a wooded area, leaving no survivors. Investigators concluded that the crash was caused because the pilot was not rated for instrumentation. And he still decided to operate the airplane under VFR. In other words, he decided to try to rely on his eyes because he didn't know how to use the instruments. <clears throat> and the conditions of the weather were such that you could not see the danger and the obstacles and the horizon. And that's why the accident occurred. In other words, he was trying to fly in a situation where his eyes could not guide him. And he had no foolproof instruments to ensure a safe flight and a safe landing. And death and destruction was the outcome of that decision. And it's not just airplanes that rely on instrumentation when their own eyes meet with challenges. On the open ocean, the sun, the moon, the stars are excellent navigational tools, and they have been for centuries. But should a storm with heavy cloud cover erase those heavenly markers, a captain can find himself and his crew at the mercy of the sea if he does not have backup instrumentation. Even in the earliest days of marine travel, the compass was known and used even if it was just in the form of a simple needle on a leaf when it had nothing else. They still had that simple instrument. And the term sunstone, if you've ever heard of a sun, sunstone, uh, it's a dream sickle colored stone and it got this name because Vikings used it on ships because even on the cloudiest days, a sunstone can show the orientation of the sun in the sky and it permits them to travel in gloomy weather. When the usual methods of navigation by what we see with our eyes and what we clearly understand is not possible, Successful pilots and captains know they must rely on their foolproof instruments. I cannot put it any more clearly than to put it this way. We, not talking pilots, 
or captains of ships, but all of us. We are unwise to attempt to navigate through this life in this year or any other year that I foresee in the near future using our eyes. Let me repeat that. We are unwise to attempt to navigate through the life that we are trying to live one day in this year or any other year relying on our eyes and what it is that we are seeing. We are not flying or sailing under visual light condition rules. We can't see and make sense of anything right now that we have in front of us. We are not flying or sailing under visual flight rules. We cannot trust our own eyes. We cannot trust our own ears because what we see, what we hear, and what we feel right now makes it very, very tough to navigate this life. The conditions that exist right now in your flight and in your sailing path are obstructed in such a way as to impede you and to confuse your natural senses and the cues you have always been able to make sense out of. Right now, we live in a very disorienting time. I'm being honest with you as I can be because this is what's happening in my life experience. And I want to, I actually brought, and I'll have to find my space again in a minute. This is my Bible, my first Bible that my Aunt Judy gave me, and I looked at it to see when. She wasn't even married to my Uncle Wendell at the time because it says Judy Marsh. I was five. So I would have been about five years old. And you can tell the fourteen has been read to death. I can tell you I read it so much that I know I, without opening it, I can tell you what the picture is with every story. I can probably tell you the stories in the order they're in. So if you have anybody to blame for me trusting scripture, we can blame my Aunt Judy. <laughs> uh, but we can definitely say that every bit of the instructions and guidelines that I received but a lot of you sitting right down the pews can blame yourselves too because you also were the ones who taught my Sunday school class. And you used the Bible when you taught me. And guess what? I listened to you. I paid, as in that before, I paid attention to you. I believed what you told me and I never let it go. Um, I even remember back my first Sunday school teacher here, although her name was not Miss Bacon, I know it was Miss Bacon, but in my mind, it's still Miss Bacon. You all remember Miss Bacon, correct? She was my first Sunday school teacher. What I'm saying is, what I'm talking about today in the scripture that I'm going to read, instead of if you get upset over anything that I quote, and think, I think the Lord had you to say that earlier, if you get upset over scripture that I quote, I think you're going to have to be upset with the book or yourselves as a church family and not at me for believing what you told me and what the Bible told me. Because because of my upbringing, because I don't remember not believing that what the Lord said was true, for me to walk through 2020, 2021, and now 22 is very disorienting. And I'm going to be venting, as it were, about life. It is disorienting for someone like me to know that I know that to get paid, you should have to work. And yet, all over this country, people are getting paid to stay at home when I know they're young. And I know they're strong. They're not disabled. They haven't paid in for Social Security. It's disorienting for, for me as a human being who grew up knowing that's wrong. It is disorienting to, for me to know that it is wrong to burn down businesses of innocent people. And yet, I watch reporters on the news and the general public applauding it as a necessary freedom of expression. That's disorienting to me. It is disorienting to know, to know that parents are actually responsible for their own children. And yet, I see every day people blaming teachers and blaming policemen when these same offspring, offspring are unsuccessful or when they have met with consequences. That's disorienting to me. Um, it is disorienting to me to know that a man is supposed to be a man and that a woman is supposed to be a woman. And I, I know back even in school when I learned that down to the level of DNA. And I've watched every show on the History Channel and I know you can dig 
pick up the bones and find out who's a man and who's a woman. So when I hear scientists and doctors tell me that that's not true, that is really disorienting to me. <laughs> um, they tell me that with a straight face. It is disorienting to know that a vaccinated person should not have to in the past fear a non-vaccinated person, but now the media tells them that they have to be afraid. It is disorienting to know that I grew up with Nancy Reagan folks who were telling me, just say no. And I was too old for the D.A.R.E. program, but I remember D.A.R.E. being taught in schools and they told us always, stand up strong for what you believe in when it came to medications and what goes into your body. But then when I became an adult and had all that training that I believed from other adults, that now I am told by the media that I have to just do it. I have to just give in to the peer pressure. And I watch the same people that I grew up with who told me to stand strong now be a part of the peer pressure. That is disorienting to me. I'm expected to forget everything that was ever taught to me and give in to peer pressure to do something I don't want to do. And in my heart, you raised me too well. And the Bible raised me too well. And I'm still strong because of it. It's disorienting to see with my own eyes the lies and the evil that I see and have seen forever in politics. And to see with my own eyes people that I have known and loved and have trusted falling for and loving and trusting those that I know are not doing the right thing for the other people in our communities. It's disorienting. Because what has been up my entire life is now being told to me is actually down. And what has always been right in my whole life is now being claimed as wrong. That is very, very disorienting at 53 years old. Because I've said it a million times, I'm still me. I look back at the video we had of, um, of my grandparents' uh, video, and they're playing on the ground with a stick in front of my grandpa on a swing, I'm playing in the dirt with a stick. I'm like, I'm still that little girl. I'm still the same little girl that they used to tell me, now you'd be smart, which meant you better behave, you better do the things we've taught you. But now to be the same smart little girl is now wrong. That's very disorienting to me. Which is why every single day, every single day, I have to write my own plane. I have to realign my ship and get it back on the correct path so that I don't crash. Because it is so disorienting if I trust my eyes and what I hear and if I trusted what I felt, I would be already running into a mountain back in 2020. A pilot crashes when he gets up and down and right and left confused. As you travel in the days and months to come, you're always going to be told what is up is up, down, and what is down is up. You're going to be told what is right is left, and what is left is right. Is that going to be confusing to tell me? If you trust what you are told, and if you trust what you see, what you hear, what you feel, you are going to be in danger of crashing. If you trust those things. Because you cannot, as we've seen, operate under visual flight conditions right now. You can't. You have to use your instrumentation. You have to use it because it is foolproof and it does not change dependent on anything. It is the truth without being affected by anything else. Because the compass is going to show north no matter the time of the day. The sunstone is going to show the sun no matter where the clouds are. The gyrosh Scope is going to show the horizon no matter how that plane is being rocked around by the wind. And the Bible is going to tell the eternal truth no matter what insanity mankind is spewing during any particular generation. It's going to be the truth year after year after year after year no matter what mankind is doing. The Bible is our foolproof instrumentation. In a plane, if I can't make out the horizon, I cannot just ask the opinion of the passengers because they're going to speak out of fear and out of inexperience. I can't ask them their opinion. I have to trust my instruments to guide me. In a ship, I cannot just go ask a sailor where the stars are on a cloudy night because he's just going to guess because he doesn't want to disappoint me. I have to trust an instrument to guide me. 
to a, to, um, 2022 and beyond, I'm not going to be able, as much as I love them, to ask my family, to ask my friends, to ask my coworkers what they believe I should do ethically, morally, or spiritually about private and public issues because sadly so few of the people that we know are fully in relationship with Jesus. They are not a vessel for his guidance in my life nor in each other's lives, and they are not well versed in God's word. So they're not going to be able to quote you, thus saith the Lord. And while I still believe many in this nation and worldwide are clamoring to know Jesus, the ability for us to be in communication with one another is not only limited. You guys know it has become more and more forbidden for Christians to share common sense Christian talk. We are blocked, we are hindered, and we are heavily censored. Um, it is that way in every aspect, not just in uh, media, but really in the books you'll find in the library. You just don't really realize what makes it to the shelf and what doesn't. So we cannot rely just yet on the worldwide brotherhood and sisterhood of Christ that we will one day fully enjoy. For now, we are navigating in very dark skies and in dark, dark waters with very few of our usual visual cues. For now, we are going to have to rely on the instrumentation of the Bible. We have to rely on the foolproof instruments. For anyone traveling, you know we have to move from point A to point B because we want to get from here to there safely. For us, the people of God, we want to get from today until the day call, God calls us home. That's our, that's our goal for ourselves. We want to do it in a vessel that has been able to navigate safely around the obstacles and to be able to deliver any and all precious cargo on board. Meaning your family, you want to be able to get everybody through these few years. Get them all there trusting in the Bible. We realize that there will be obstacles to navigate around because that is life, and God told us there are going to be obstacles to navigate. But I believe we all agree that right now those obstacles are more plentiful and they are shrouded in fog. They are obscured from clear sight. We also know that right now up is presented to us as down and down is presented to us as up. What was once right is now left of us, and what was left is now right of us. And so we have to work hard to prevent ourselves being in a collision and a crash. We have to continue to recognize we're not in visual flight rules. We have to rely on the Bible to navigate. We have to rely on the steadfast, unchangeable, eternal, foolproof, trustworthy, accurate Word of God. And here is where the rubber meets the road, or in this analogy, the rubber meets the air and meets the water. When you rely on the instrumentation, you get true navigation, and you head the right direction safely. In an actual plane or ship, all the occupants are unaware of their, their peril. And if they were out to look out and see the clouds and the rain, and you told them you could not see where you were going, but you were going to trust your tools and your instruments, they would applaud that decision because they don't want to die. But in our Satan-infused world, as we pilot our own planes and captain our own ships, others in the air and the ocean yell and they scoff and they complain and they even guilt us. If they see our vessels, making turns that are contrary to the ones that they're taking. It's because they're, they're trying to get through with their eyes and we're using our instruments and it's going to look very, very, very different from the turns that they're taking because we're taking the ones that are taking us to safety. And yet they are navigating by their eyes and by their understanding and it is unto their own deaths and destructions while we are using the trustworthy instruments that are leading us safely home. Right now, as we navigate through life, getting from one destination to our home in heaven, we are facing a multitude of obstacles 
but we have a clear instrument outlining how each is to be handled. This is just a few, and this is where it gets saying, y'all, are you sure? <laughs> because we have had these topics come up with every election, with every time there's any argument online. So I said, how do we navigate around these issues when the Bible tells us really clearly in the instrumentation? Abortion. Psalm 130, 13 through 16, it says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. And homosexuality, we argue between each other instead of just going to the book. And Leviticus 18.22 says, Do not have sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman. That is detestable. And what of Israel that was mentioned today? Genesis 12.3, how do we handle our relationship with Israel? Genesis 12, 3 says, I will bless those who bless you, speaking of Israel, and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And Psalm 122, 6 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. Zechariah 2, 8 tells us, For thus said the Lord of hosts, after his glory sent you to the nations who plundered you, for he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. And Isaiah 60, 12 says, For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Those nations shall be utterly laid to waste. He makes no, no question about it. What about those who are continuing to stay home and not work when they are able? When they are able to. 2 Thessalonians 3.10 says, For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule, the one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. Don't be mad at me. <laughs> I did ask to get out. Um, how about people who are causing division, when people constantly are on media causing, constantly trying to get us to fight each other. Titus 3.10 says, As for the person who stirs up division, Warning once, then twice, have nothing else more to do with them. Which is why I don't watch the news. I never know what's going to happen with the weather because they've been warned once, they've been warned twice. I have nothing more to do with them. And then this quite possibly is a very difficult, but I didn't write it. Again, it's a difficult thing, but I didn't write it. God did. Uh, that back in 2020 when we were talking about I have a lot of people that are Christian friends that are very viciously angry over the topic of bringing in people of other faiths and what Christians should do. But Deuteronomy 7, 2, 4 says this, and it's all in the Bible. And when the Lord your God gives them over to you, speaking of a group of a different faith, and you defeat them, you must devote them to complete destruction. You shall make no covenant with them and show no mercy to them. You shall not intermarry them. Giving your daughters to their sons or taking their daughters for your sons. For they will turn away your sons from following me to serve other gods. It's the, clearly he's helping us to get from point A to point B. What about those that we know don't, don't take care of their own families? 1 Timothy 5 eight says anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. And again, all the arguments in church bodies about male and female, it's one sentence long. Genesis 5-2, he created the male and female and blessed them. Now those were just a few examples that I could get out of. Of how our navigational instrument, the Bible, is clear in providing guidance in what is, particularly now, clouded in a haze of confusion, of misfiring external cues, from family, from friends, from co-workers, from media, and even from church bodies. And I'm talking about this church body, governing church bodies. People that you respect and trust to be thinking about these things. And while I certainly hoped so much, and I still hope that the millions of prayers over these last few years 
I had hoped that the rise of God's people would was going to result in a worldwide revival. I really was hoping that's what 2021 was going to be. One in which clear sight was going to resume and what was right and holy would be so obvious to everyone that we could all see it clearly. That revival didn't happen yet. Which to me is significant with all the prayers that were going up. And it tells me I might be able to see the lighthouse piercing the fog soon. Maybe I'll start to see that landing strip lights coming into view very soon. And maybe our planes and our ships are approaching the homeland. And maybe that's why that didn't happen. Well, if I were to preach another five minutes or another five days on this, you're going to be convinced, or you're not. It, it's, it's that clear how God has, has placed you right now on your walk. You will either keep trusting your own senses and risk disaster and continue to navigate in this cloud, basing it on feelings and your own sight and what other people are telling you. Or you will wisely use the externally accurate instrument that you have been given to navigate with and sail safely with into the harbor of home. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we certainly know that you have given us this word. And Lord, it's, you know, we oftentimes think about having had the word of uh, your word since the time of Jesus, but it was thousands of years before that. You have not asked your people to travel through uh, this very difficult <coughs> life uh, without your guidance. And I know it must be incredibly frustrating to see us trying to use our five senses to get through very, very difficult times when you have uh, written a book, an instrument book, and it has told us, even now, um, anybody who studies the Bible knows that when we say it's a living document, that is so true. Even today, Lord, as you overheard me say it, uh, there's no need anymore to listen to the news. I can just go pick up the Bible and find out what's happening uh, like in Europe, pretty much. It's, it, you, you are that much uh, up to date constantly on the things going on in private life. The things going on in our mind, the things going on in our emotions, the things going on in our community, the things going on nationwide and worldwide. It is an incredible, incredible document to be used in any situation in which we're assailing. Lord, help us always to give the, uh, have that uh, motivation to go in and to see what it is you have said and to push us out of our own egos and our own uh, feelings and realize that feelings aren't going to get us there any more than they would in driving a car. And Lord, bless us and bring us joy in that discovery. We ask this in Jesus' most precious holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.